Welcome to this Pearl of Laboratory Medicine brought to you by AACC and the Clinical Chemistry Trainee Council. View this and many more pearls as well as other free educational material at traineecouncil.org. Hello, my name is Alek Bobor. I'm Assistant Professor and a Medical Director of Blood Bank and Tissue Services at University of Nebraska Medical Center in Omaha, Nebraska. Welcome to this Pearl of Laboratory Medicine on Daratumumab Interference in Pre-Transfusion Testing. Multiple myeloma is a hematologic malignancy affecting antibody-producing plasma cells. One of the targeted antibody-based therapies is Daratumumab, a human IgG1K monoclonal antibody that targets CD38 glycoprotein located on the cellular surface of the neoplastic plasma cells. It is currently approved by FDA for multiple myeloma patients who have received only one prior therapy. This approval by FDA came as the result of two simultaneous trials demonstrating similar and substantial improvements in progression-free survival despite different accompanying drug regimens proving that daratumumab was the primary agent responsible for the improved clinical endpoints. CD38, besides being expressed on plasma cells, is also expressed on multiple other hematologic cell types, including red blood cells, medullary thymocytes, activated B and T cells, natural killer cells, monocytes, granulocytes, and others. This expression led to interference of daratumumab in the assays that use secondary anti-human IgG antibody for amplification of signal, such as IHG phase of red cell antibody screen and others. Let's discuss a typical case of daratumumab interference. 60-year-old female patient undergoing treatment for multiple myeloma, was found to have low hemoglobin and needed transfusion. A routine red cell antibody screen test was submitted to hospital's transfusion medicine laboratory, and results are shown below. The image below shows typical pre-transfusion antibody screen. The purpose of the test is to identify any antibodies that present in a recipient serum and that may cause hemolysis of transfused red blood cells. Three different screening cells with different antigen phenotype are used for screening. The testing uses anti-human globulin, or AHG, as enhancer of the reaction to detect binding of antibodies to the screening cells. In this case, all screening cells show weakly positive reaction, while out of control receiving own cells is negative. Since selection of antigen combination in free cell panel is limited, the next step is to perform extended panel, testing larger number of screening cells to identify antibody present in recipient serum. The image here is representative of extended red blood cell antibody screen with multiple different cells tested. All of the cells excluding outer control, show positive reaction at IHG phase of the test. This pattern is considered panreactive. Panreactivity in antibody screen has the following differential diagnosis. If outer control is positive alongside all other tested cells, then we are dealing with either cold or warm outer antibodies. If outer control is negative, this pattern is usually found in a situation of antibody toward high incidence antigen. Additionally, interference from monoclonal antibodies like daratumumab can present with panreactivity pattern, either with or without positive outer control. The more common situation in daratumumab cases is negative outer control. Logically thinking, no specific binding of daratumumab to red blood cells should have mimicked the out antibody pattern. That is why presence of negative outer control in majority of daratumumab patients created confusion among blood bankers. Recently, studies on immunomodulation helped explain this phenomenon. 
Immunomodulation is selective removal of antigen from red blood cell membrane by spleen monocytes when they are passing through the spleen. It was shown in the models explaining RHIG and anti-KL immunoglobulin prophylaxis. In these models, the transfused cells in the presence of antibody were either removed or lost antigen from their membrane, which mimics daratumumab situation. In our case, uh, negative outer control effectively rules out warm and cold outer antibodies. The differentiation between antibody towards high incidence antigen and daratumumab or other monoclonal therapeutic antibody interference requires review of medication administration records and or special techniques in transfusion laboratory. The most commonly accepted technique in transfusion lab that helps distinguish and overcome daratumumab interference is pretreatment of screening cells with DTT. DTT destroys CD38 on the surface of red cells, and as such, daratumumab will not bind screening cells. In terms of test interpretation, it will look like pan reactivity disappears after DTT pretreatment. At the same time, DTT also destroys antigens from Kell blood group and makes impossible testing for the presence of anti kel antibodies. In other words, we cannot tell for sure whether the pan reactivity is due to daratumumab or high incidence antigen from the Kell blood group. DDT may destroy antigens from other blood groups as well, like LW, but they are either rare or clinically insignificant. Other techniques, like using enzymes, for example, papain, can be useful in distinguishing high incidence antigens. Here is an example of antibody screening performed with DTT treated screening cells. As you can see, there is no reaction between patient serum and screening cells, and the screen is negative. The big limitation of this method is inability to rule out Kell blood group antibodies. That is why two practical approaches have been developed. If blood bank is notified prior to daratumumab treatment, then the patient can be tested for Kell antigen and Kell matched blood can be provided afterwards. If this notification did not happen, the only option that remains is to use DDD treatment to exclude antibodies from all groups but Kell and provide Kell negative blood for this recipient. From clinical experience, the patient treated with daratumumab are very unlikely to make additional antibodies. And as such, releasing Kell negative units is safe practice despite incompatible cross matches in these patients. Antibody screen is not the only assay affected by daratumumab. All assays that use secondary anti human antibodies and test the cells that have a CD38 expression can be affected. The following assays were reported to be affected by teratumumab in literature. Red cell antibody screening, anti-neutrophil antibody testing, anti-platelet antibody testing, platelet cross match. DDT is not the only strategy used to overcome interference, but it is cheap and widely accepted. The other approaches have been tried and include soluble CD38 antigen, anti-ideotype antibody, F2 fragments of daratumumab, blocking mouse anti-CD38 antibody, and cord blood testing. But all of them are more expensive than DTT or not commercially available. Now, at the end of the case, let's summarize the conclusion. Daratumumab is a humanized antibody for treatment of multiple myeloma that can cause interference due to not specific binding. The most affected assay is red cell antibody screen, but other assays that use secondary anti-human antibody can be affected as well. The accepted approach to overcome interference is pretreatment of the cells with DTT that destroys CD38. Other approaches have been tried, but not currently commercially available or accepted.
Thank you for participating in this clinical chemistry training consult purse of laboratory medicine. For more like this, as well as articles, podcasts, and more, please visit the Trainee Council at traineecouncil.org.